work of art Baby, look at me, I'm a work of art Now they framing me, painting in the dark When it dead be, I'm a work of art As I live and breathe Hello and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be finally featuring a Porsche on the channel and a classic one which is amazing. However, this one's got a little bit of a twist. It's actually virtually a Tesla inside. And I'll get onto that later in the video, but it's a 1969 Porsche 911 with a good backstory as to why it's gone EV and also as to how it potentially drives better on the road, which is going to cause a lot of mixed opinions. But Without further ado, let's get on the road and see how it drives. So here we go. Got my gloves on, ready to have a nice drive with this lovely Porsche 911 with a twist. I think straight away, I love the fact that because it is still the classic car, you've got the original body panels, etc., that you would on the original. So you can still see the lovely flared arches on the front for the headlights. And also the feel of the interior is the same. It's not jazzed up. It's not all wooden and God knows what else in terms of materials. It's exactly how it was when it was built in 1969. So in terms of the feel of the car, you don't lose that classicness to it, which you do in a, a modern EV. And that is ultimately for me already a massive tick because the thing I hate the most about a lot of EVs is they're so plasticky looking and they've got no shape to them and obviously with this car basically being a Tesla I mean look at the Cybertruck where's the design in that? <laughs> it's quick that's for sure and I think what's really interesting is that the guys at Relic showed me on an app that it's in chill mode so not only is it already quicker 0 to 60 wise etc than the original you can also make this car faster <laughs> but i definitely don't think we need to be thinking about that today but ultimately just enjoying the fact that even the way it's set up in chill mode it's still plenty fast enough <laughs> that's absolutely brilliant it literally the way it sits as well like when you plant your foot the car just dips it's almost like it's you turn into a rocket ship and it wants to take you upwards such a cool feeling and I think without the sound of an engine it's not too much of a problem because of the fact that you still are in a classic car whereas what I've previously found is being in a modern EV is so boring there's no sound there's noise deadening in all the panels so you don't get any road noise you don't get any tire noise it's literally just you and the car and potentially the radio or your sat nav telling you that you're going in the wrong direction Whereas with this, you can actually enjoy the drive of it more because it's got all the original panels and the bodywork's all original. It's not been tinkered with so that it's a boring car, if that makes sense. It's still a classic car. Yes, you could argue it hasn't got the sound of an engine, it hasn't got the sound of an exhaust, but you don't really need it. Especially in something like this, I don't think it's necessary. <laughs> it's so much fun when you put your foot down. Like, it's a different experience to anything I've really driven before. I've obviously driven the Abarth EV, which had a bit of a kick in sport mode, but not quite like this because of the way the car is so low and like I said, it's still a Porsche. It's not a Fiat, it's not a Tesla, it's not, God knows what else, a Polster. It's still a classic Porsche and that's the thing that I love. And going off the back of that, the reason this car has been converted to EV it's because the owner of the car had got to the point where the engine had almost given up. So it was misfiring certain cylinders, the engine wasn't giving up any power at all. And if you're going to make a restoration compared to building an engine and making it EV, I guess it's a good time to make the decision in a way. You're not kind of forcing the fact that it's got to be EV. You can obviously think about the idea that it can potentially be a ULES compliant classic if it's not already. And also you get the experience of just getting in the car, turning it on, you don't have to worry about it kicking up a load of smoke when you turn it on or the engine needs to run for 10 minutes before you can drive it properly. It's literally click, go. And it wants to go. It grips so well though. It's obviously got very good tyres on it because it has to, but 
with the amount of power that's going just to the rear wheels, you'd think it would lose a lot more traction than it actually does. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm probably going 30% of what this car is capable of, for obvious reasons. <laughs> but it's still so much fun and quick enough for virtually any type of drive you want to go on. So the guys at Relic EV are the people that have converted this car and they haven't touched anything in terms of the external bodywork or kind of Bristol mod wise. It's all very original on the interior and exterior. The wheels I believe are aftermarket but they are going to be changed to a different wheel before it goes back to the client. I think the only thing that's noticeably changeable visually wise is the um, head up display dashboard, whatever you want to call it. That part of the car is new but it works very well because it's obviously an EV and you want to be a little bit reminded that it's got that modern touch to it. The modern dials actually work really really nicely, finished in the same yellow as the exterior but you've got your normal rev limiter, you've got your speedo and then you've got your battery percentage as well as your clock which are basically the same as what you'd have in the original car because obviously you'd have the rev limiter, the speedo, you'd have the fuel gauge, not the battery range but it's still a cool way to add it and then your original clock so it's very nice they've kept that fairly unique to how the car was and apart from that there's nothing really to say about the visual changes to the car. So the EV side of things, obviously the title was a bit clickbaity in terms of a Tesla powered Porsche, however it's generally got the exact same batteries as you'd find in a Tesla Model S. So in terms of power output and all those good things, mileage and that kind of recognition that Tesla have in the EV world, it's basically the same, but it just looks 10 times better. <laughs> and also I'd imagine a lot of people more would appreciate seeing one of these at a car show than an EV. So it's got that debate of should it be EV because obviously everyone's very OG, like I want it to have an engine, I want it to be making noise, I want it to have those problems that I have to fix mechanically. But it's just nice to know that you can get behind the wheel of the car and not have to worry about those a little bit more. So in terms of that, I think it's really mega what it, Relic EV have done. I think one thing I've just clicked on is, I think the reason why I love this car so much is the fact that it still turns people's heads and it still gets that attraction that the classic car would. Because obviously from a bystander's perspective, if you're just driving down the road, unless you're very vigilant to the noise it's not making, you wouldn't clock onto the fact that it is an EV. And that's probably the best thing because you want people to still appreciate the fact that it's a classic Porsche and that it's had all its heritage that it's had, it's had its ownership that it's had, it's done the miles that it's done. But the fact that it's still on the road rather than being in a scrapyard or in someone's garage, you're still able to use it and maximize its potential for its lifespan. So I think that's really a great thing that Relic EV have done to this car really because it'd be so sad to never see this car on the road again and I think that's kind of the trouble that a lot of classics have they get to that point where they cost too much to fix or you don't have the time to fix them that potentially running them as an EV would give the car a lot more life so you could arguably say that it's better than owning the original classic so let's dive into the EV spec a little bit more. The total mileage range for this car is 170 miles with 100% charge, which is really good. Compared to EVs I've driven, they give you like less than 100 on full charge and it's a nightmare. So to think that you could enjoy your mileage a lot more in an EV and do 170 of them rather than pre 100, it's magnificent. I think that for me is it's plenty far enough to get you to a car show, it's plenty far enough to get you to an event you want to go to or even just to have a fun drive out on the road generally. So for me that's mega, I love that. And then it's also got a fast charger, so 30 minutes and you're at 80% charge. So it's not even a case of having to charge it for hours on end or leave it on charge overnight to go out for a drive. Say if you wake up in the morning you've got 10% battery, oh no what am I going to do? find a fast charger, half an hour later, you're on the road. So even that side of things, you're not losing too much in terms of the petrol aspect that this car would have if it was more convenient. So yeah, in that sense, I've got nothing to moan about on those kind of terms. So here we go, my first chance to properly put my foot down. I've got a nice straight and a bit of clear traffic. That's 
already 60 miles an hour. I don't think I even had the chance to blink. <laughs> that is crazy fast. Wow. <laughs> That's so impressive. I think if you think about what this car would have been like classically with its engine, you wouldn't get that kind of performance, even if you modified it and tuned it to God knows how much. I think it would still feel slower than that. So that's really, really cool. <laughs> that's taken, my, uh, taken the words out of my mouth a little bit. I'm surprised how much I'm smiling, to be honest. I think I was very optimistic going into obviously driving this car with the fact that I love classics and I absolutely adore classic Porsches. But I think I've driven a couple of these when photographing them for collecting cars with engines, of course. And I haven't got less of an enjoyment out of the experience whatsoever. I think for me, it's almost up to my experience because it's so unique. Right, so let's conclude the video. Like I said, it's shocked me. I am blown away by the performance. I'm blown away by the fact that it still feels like a classic. I'm blown away by how the car drives and the experience of it all. So for me, I, I can't fault it. Obviously compared to other EVs I've driven that are brand new manufactured cars, there's so much more of a buzz from this than anything you could put me on in that's brand new, that's for sure. And like I said, it's got the appreciation still of being a classic Porsche, just with potentially more reliable dynamics. So for me, it's uh, yeah, a big tick. <laughs> But do check out Relic EV below. I'll leave all the links to their profiles and website in case you're interested in converting your car to EV or you just want to see more of what they do. But for now, I'm going to say like and subscribe. Plenty more videos to come. And I'll see you again soon.